Welcome back to the reusable space program. So in this episode, we are going to be taking a few new contracts. We're going to be using liquid fuel rockets for the first time. And we're going to be trying to send a, a slightly different craft to go and get science. So we're going to accept a few contracts and we're going to get going. Please join us. So in the VAB, we are going to create the X2A. We're not very good with the naming right now because, you know, we're not a naming company. We're a, we're a rocket organization with four people in it. Um, we're just going to stick a few fuel tanks on there and an engine on the bottom. And just to give it some stability, we're going to put some fins on there. Please like and subscribe if you uh, enjoy this series or any of the others. Um, so on the launch pad, we have Nakot Kerman. We're just checking she's not going to die by making sure the parachutes are actually going to open at the correct time. Um, yes, remember to sort your staging out because I did not, and I, this is a, a long-term habit of mine. So our aim with this rocket is we're actually going to try and fire it off over the water and try and get some additional science from over there. Um, however, first we want to check that there's actually no science on the runway, uh, because you know, we're always trying to get a little bit of science. So with that, we're all ready. We've got to uh, throttle up. We don't want to go full throttle straight away and let's go. So we're taking off and we're not full throttling it because I'm concerned that we actually do put too much uh, thrust into this rocket and it gets too fast too quick. What I really want to do is head towards that island over there because that looks quite interesting. I'm not sure if we'll make it, um, but it'd be nice to get somewhere near it. At least we can get into the water, which would be nice. This craft is fitted with our sort of standard science suite at the moment. You've seen it in the last episode towards the end. Um, and we're just going to try and basically farm a little bit of science on Kerbin. Um, to get further out, we're going to have to develop some slightly different craft and we're going to have to do um, do some more risky stuff. At the moment, we're just sort of hopping around. Um, this flight here, this is really unstable. It was it was, um, it was was difficult flying sideways in a sort of sensible direct manner because the craft had twisted and my controls were all over the place, to be honest with you. Um, but we are heading out and I just want to make sure if nothing else that I actually end up in the water. Now we've got a good deal of, of, of velocity now going sideways. Um, it is just a matter of seeing where we end up. Actually landing a rocket on the island is probably unlikely, but we can at least get near it. And we can actually see there is something on the island. Nakot is looking down and, and she can see there's something there. She's not. She thought all Kerbals had actually abandoned the surface. They got into the trees or the burrows or whatever. They thought they were the only ones left, but no, there's something there. Maybe it's just an old building. Maybe it's like the, the, the space center they've got. Maybe it's just an old leftover building. She doesn't know. I, mean, I think that needs to be investigated a little bit more. Maybe there's some tales in the old books that they have. So she's opened the parachutes and she, 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 she knows her main job is science. She's, she's looking out the window, but she's trying to do some science as well, because that's quite important, obviously. Um, at this point, I was actually concerned about if the rocket could be down a little too fast because when these parachutes open, it could twist, but yeah, okay. Um, one of the big concerns I have with this actual series is if I have parachutes opening um, at different heights, uh, different times, I could I could snap the craft and that would, that would lead to nightmares. I may end up actually putting parachutes on different parts of the craft, but then you have them coming down at funny angles. Um, one thing you can do, is fire the engines as you come down just to take the edge off. Number one, you can you can slow the craft down a little bit, but number two, you can also lighten the craft, and that lightening is very important. We wanna wanna lose weight, lose mass, so that the parachutes are actually more effective. So it's it's a double win really. We take a little bit of, of speed out. Um, best to do it just towards the end, not a suicide burn as such. We don't want to stop. We definitely don't want to stop because if we stop the parachutes may disengage and then we just plummet to our death. But just before we get to the water, we just run it just a little bit, just to bring that speed down. So we just plop into the water and there we go. And our SES is actually holding us upright, which is really nice. And then we let it fall over. And that's the scary bit in case anything breaks. We have a quick look around. Everything seems to be okay. We'll do some science from wherever we can. And uh, yeah, can we get some science from the water? We can, we'll keep all of that, that's lovely. Get get Nakot out, get some more science. We are really on a race now because we are, we are fund limited and science limited. We need to get the big science as quickly as possible. So with the Nat mission completed, Nakot deserves a little bit of a break. So we've got Sean and Nakot are doing all the flying right now. 
and we got so much science look at that we got 120 science we're going to spend some of that we get some more stuff we're going to get some more fuel tanks some more engines yeah well maybe we will um it is well worth noting that actually at this moment i can only stay small however while sean and nakot are having fun um Matt and Scott have felt a little left out. The engineer and the scientist have felt a little left out. So they've built this. It's their science roller. And it is a an odd little craft that they can, they don't have wheels. They, obviously the Kerbals haven't developed wheels at this point. Um, so so they're just going to roll around on this. Um, and you notice it's got a little, a little science uh, experimental bay in the middle there and their two pods. Um, and it's got some, um, it's got some goo canisters on one of them. I, I actually should have balanced this by putting goo canisters on both or putting the goo canisters in the middle. I, I didn't. Um, we're just running off internal electricity now and the torque of those capsules. And they're, they're having a great time. Look at them. They're just enjoying it, enjoying it. Enjoy yeah, look at that. Yes, well done, Scott. It's, it's clapping his hands. Um, this this is not a long-term sort of option, I don't think, for uh, for craft, for, for doing exploration, but it does allow us to get a little bit of extra science. So if you're just missing a couple of points of science, sometimes you can just do this. Now, the controls are a little interesting because you're rolling and you've got two craft that are rolling, so you have to be a little careful. And you'll see here I start to, to spin it to one side that I don't want to, and then I have to yaw it back. But of course, the yaw moves depending on which way the capsule is facing, so it, it gets a little bit interesting. And what we're just trying to do is, I'm trying to get a speed up in it now, we're trying to, there we go. So we've got from the cor the crawlway. The crawlway is its own biome. There's a lot of biomes around the KSC and it's worth just um, having a walk around if you can. Early tech does stop you because of wheels and things like that, but we will have a craft later that can do a little bit more exploring. But Matt and Scott are quite excited. They found stuff on the crawlway that they hadn't noticed before. So let's move on. Right, we can now get ourselves some extra stuff for the science that we've built up. Um, so we're going to get some aircrafty parts. Hmm, can you see what's about to happen? Because you can probably guess where this is going. Um, we have a runway on an island. Um, I don't think I can land a rocket on it. I think we may have to build ourselves a plane. Right. And here it is. This is the A1A. Yes, the naming system is terrible for this series. We're using X's and A's. A1A. I won't tell you what happened to the A1B and the A1C. We might find out in the future. Um, simple jet engine on the back you'll notice i'm moving the um the wings so i built the whole craft and then i fueled it up and i moved the wings just so that we get our center of lift just behind our center of mass you'll see just behind the cockpit there there is also a little storage unit that has got our science experiments in it so we can take science experiments with us and we can have crew experiments we've got some drogue shoots on the back we've got some parachutes all along because yeah i am i'm not the best pilot and um yeah so First test flight, Sean Kerman takes to the skies in what they're going to call a plane. They have never come up with something called a plane before. This idea of having something go sideways off a piece of dirt is a new thing for the Kerbals. And Sean has jumped in and gone, yes, I will try that. I, I am the greatest pilot there ever was, or I will be. I will be the Jebediah of my generation. He takes off and, and then he gets a message from Mission Control, which is, right, that, that's nice, that's nice, Sean. S Scott and Matt are there. Yeah, that's nice, nice, Scott, you're, you're doing really well now. Can we can we try the abort system? He doesn't really want to try the abort system, but, you know, he does what he's told. He fires off his, his drug shoots to see what happens. Yep, they work, and then he fires off his other shoots, and, and then he points out, I'm over the water, and they say, yeah, that was our plan. Uh, we want you to, to land in the water. Now... Many moons ago, the water of Kerbin was exceedingly dangerous, and any craft landing in it would be likely to explode. However, for some reason, as the resources of the planet have run down, the water has become safer as well. So we can now use it as a nice, soft, soft, squidgy thing to land on. Scott was getting a little concerned there that he was going head first into it, but well, now his parachutes have opened, he's perfectly level. Um, the parachutes on this are very important to place them carefully. Um, I was aware that, you know, particularly wings and tail fins and flaps potentially can fly off in water still quite easily. Um, we just speed down now. So so Sean is just basically just slowly working his way down. This was very much a test of the landing safety system because I'm concerned about what might happen in the next part of this episode because I want to go to the island runway. And I've never been particularly successful at the island runway. If you've ever looked in my um, 
uh, Pool Pilot Better Plane series, there is a section where I try and land on the island runway. I think one craft crashes in the water in front of it, another craft crashes into the, um, the structures there, and another one ends up completely destroying itself. So it, not the best. So Sean, make sure he does his science. Oh, we can get a crew report because we haven't had one from the shore before, have we? Oh, he gets that, and uh, he's quite he's done. He's he's got a little bit of science. He's tried out this new craft. He can tow it back to water. I'm sure we have a, a boat we can just attach it to and, and Scott and Matt and Nakok can just row him back to the to the to the shore. Now, for flight number two. This one's gonna be a bit bigger. Sean is excited. He's gonna go somewhere that they haven't been. He's Nakot spoken to him about this site, this this island off the coast. Almost like a James Bond sort of villain's island with a runway and things. Sean wants to investigate. Sean, Sean fancies himself as a little bit of a spy, a little bit of a, a daredevil. He, he thinks, you know, he could have his martini shaken, not stirred, or stirred and shaken and possibly lit on fire. So he takes off. He's um, he's going full throttle. He, he, he you know, he, he's trying this craft out. He's going to give it a bit of a wave around and stuff. Um, he likes this little thing. It's nimble. It's a very little nimble craft. He thinks, yes, I like this. This is, this is I could do with this. This is a wonderful little craft. Um, and we're going to head straight over to the island because I believe that there is actually some science over there. I believe that the biome, that there's a separate biome for the airfield. So we're going to try and acquire that um, instead of just going around the, the KSC. Let's do something a little different, I think. Now, he's approaching the island runway and you can see he's going to slow his engine down just a little bit because we are doing quite a high speed. Um, I'm, I'm acutely aware of the fact that the island runway is not the longest and it also has the most interesting um, entrance. Not as bad as it used to be. It used to be a terrible, terrible landing site because you could fall off the edge of it really easily. It's actually been improved significantly. And in some t in, in some of the earlier versions, if you had the graphic settings on too low, the island runway would actually hover above the water, which was an interesting little thing. They've, they've fixed all that in the, the more, well, actually in version one and onwards, it's been fixed, been fixed for a while. So we're gonna come over the island runway just to have a little observation to start with he's going to come in and um he's going to have a little look we don't we don't want to land straight away we want to get a feel of the land obviously nakot's mentioned that there's some structures there but you know scott's uh oh, sorry sean's sean's intrigued he, he he wants to see it but he doesn't feel the need to to land just yet he's also considering whether he should do a barrel roll over the top or or even just uh just go straight past the, the tower and buzz the tower um because he's got that sort of top gun mentality in him obviously he's our, he's our number one ace pilot wannabe i think nakot's actually better but don't tell him that so he's looking out the window there he's having a look he sees something he just you know it, it's interesting it's just um what, what is that what does he hears a noise something happens and yeah his engine just stops working it's just not really work. He's losing control, so he's he's bailed out his parachutes. He's just gonna, yeah. He's a sitting duck. He's he's looking out the window now. He's quite aware that if there's anybody down there, he is not going to be able to hide from them right now. This giant orange parachute structure is coming down. He is he's going to deactivate his engine just to try and quieten himself down a little bit because he he knows he could be a, quite a good spy if he tried. Although I, I'm not entirely sure he realizes he's got bright orange parachutes. If I'm entirely honest so he's going to come in and he's hoping to land somewhere where he can actually get the plane back from um there's a bit of a wobble we come down he's a little concerned about the speed and there we go look at that uh oh oh uh, sean sean what are you doing put the brakes on sean the brakes the brakes the brakes are on sean why are you not stopping why do you still seem to be sliding down a hill what are you doing sean put your foot on the now you're turning sideways and that's okay well that's one way to park it isn't it you almost broke the nose off i will say the nose didn't come off i actually checked uh, later on the nose is still attached it just wobbled a lot um interestingly he can now get some more science from kerbin's shores this isn't kerbin's shores this is an island what's going on so he's going to get out and have a little investigate Yep, yeah, he can, he can, he, he's on the airfield. He's getting science from above the airfield. How wonderful. Right. Um, now, how to get, we forgot to put a ladder on, Sean, didn't we? Yeah, I think this is going to be, this is not going to be the most graceful of quick, do your special secret agent commando roll. No, you're just going to fall off the edge. Okay. Right. Let's, let's walk really st stealth. That's not stealthily walking, Scott. 
Sean, 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 that is not stealthily walking. You're walking like a zombie. Yes. As Sean does a little bit of investigating, we're going to end this episode. So if you'd like to see what happens next, please come back for the next one. Have a great one. Have a great day and enjoy yourselves.